everyone, I'm Susie Simmons from SimmonsClassroom.com and one of the requests that I got for this week's workshop was to look at Edpuzzle and how you can add questions and interactivity to the videos that you're sending to your students. So let's get started. I'm on Edpuzzle.com and in order to create an account you need to click on the sign up button in the upper right hand corner. Then select that you are a teacher and from here you can either sign up with a regular email address or in this case you can sign in or sign up with Google. I always use that option because then it's one last email for me to remember. Once you've gotten into Edpuzzle, there's a couple different ways that you can find content. So first off, you can use the content area on the left hand side of your screen and you can narrow down the content area to folks that have shared content at your school, as well as curriculum that has been prepared for, for example, high school teachers, and then you can choose math and find specific videos having to do with what you're looking for. And a lot of clicking in, but then you can get to certain areas um, with different videos. Then you can also use the channels button on the left hand side in order to find specific videos that might pertain to what you're looking for. So I could choose Khan Academy, for example, and repeat the same process. And I can also search using the bar at the top. But let's say for the sake of argument that I want to use a video of my own creation. So all that you need to do at this point is to click on my content on the left hand side. And then in order to add content, we're going to click on the button in the upper right hand corner and then upload a video. From here, you can choose the file that you'd like to video uh, upload. It should be, as they say, less than one gig in uh, file size. And so I can come in and then choose a video to upload. and it will start uploading. Now for the sake of argument, I'm going to use a video that I've already uploaded to make it a little bit easier. So there's uh, this video clip that I have. And then in order to add interactivity to it, questions, that sort of thing, I'm going to click on the edit button on the right hand side. And then from here, I can cut, do a voiceover or add questions. And so cut is the first one, and that's if you wanted to trim off any pieces of the video that weren't, wasn't relevant to what you wanted the students to look at. I like this option for if you have a video that maybe you recorded, you did an introduction to it, but you don't need to use that piece uh, with your students anymore, you could cut that piece off. You can also cut off the ending. I often will leave a little bit of dead air at the end of the videos that I record so that way I can have a clean end and so you can automatically trim the beginning or the end throughout here. Then you can add a voiceover if you wanted to and so if you wanted to do a voiceover then it would record over um, your existing video and so at this point I could click start recording and I want to make sure that I allow it. So this is where I'm doing some trash cleanup last week during Earth Day. And then once it processes it, then it lets me see this is the piece that I recorded new audio over. And I like this feature because sometimes I might, for example, for a math equation, write up solving the equation but not speak as clearly as I wanted to during the recording and so this would let me record new words to go with the video that I had done and then finally the questions choice you can do a multiple choice question an open-ended or a note and so we can start at the very beginning and I can add a multiple choice question and these if you hover on this as it tells you these will be automatically graded and so they'll get a green check check mark to click the correct option. So day was Wednesday of last week. Um, it was Labor Day or New Year's Day or it was Earth Day. 
And so for here, I need to mark which ones are correct and which ones are wrong. And then I can also give them some feedback. So on this piece, I could say, you are right. And if I decided that they, I wanted to give them feedback if they selected the wrong answer, then I could either upload an image or add an image as a URL. I could also give them a link. So if I wanted to link, for example, in this case, I could be linking to a calendar that might give them some more information. Or if it was a math equation, I could be giving them a YouTube link to a follow up video. There's all kinds of different ways that I could use the feedback option, but I really like either one of these because it allows you to give them that feedback um, instantly without them having to wait for you to give it to them. So it will likely result in them seeing and actually paying attention to it much quicker or much more likely. And so I've just saved it. And so right at the beginning of this video, this is the kind of question that they would see. And this marks, this shows you what their feedback would have been. So at zero minutes, this question is going to happen. Now, if I wanted to change it to be more like 10 seconds into it, then I could change it to be 10 and it automatically moves the question to 10 seconds into it instead. I could um, edit the question if I wanted to in the bottom right, or I can say continue. And then I can keep on adding additional um, questions into it. The open-ended questions are, um, as you could imagine, open-ended. So this is just typing your question. It gives them a box in order to give their feedback. And then you would have to manually enter whether it's correct or not. And then you can also add a note into it. And so this you can either do as a voice memo, or you can also add some additional text. Um, so Earth Day 2020. And then if I click Save, that tells me again, this one is shown at 13 seconds. So if I wanted to change it to be at the beginning of the video instead, then I can do that. Um, and then over here on the right left hand side, we see basically our timeline. So at the start, we're going to show a note that says Earth Day 2020. Then I have a voiceover set from zero seconds to eight seconds. And then at 10 seconds, I'm going to ask what day of the week, uh, what day was Wednesday of last week. And so then if I click create, And so here's, this is an example at 10 seconds, I get to this question and then I can click continue. And then that's the end of my video. So at this point I can click finish and then I can use the assign button to add it to a class. And you can either create a class right here or you can also import a class through Google Classroom. So if I click import, um, import into Google Classroom, then I can add a new class I've imported. Coming into here, I have to basically give Edpuzzle permission to communicate with my Google Classroom. And then once the communication link is selected, then it's going to give me a list of all my classes that I can choose from. And so I can choose. I can choose my class that I want it to go into. I want it to go to this class. I want it to be posted tomorrow at 8 a.m. If I scroll down a little, there's 8 a.m. I can click save. The due date, let's change the start date is tomorrow. The due date is going to be Thursday by the end of the day. If I click save and prevent skipping, it just basically means that the students can't skip the questions. They have to pay attention to them. They can't get past them. Um, they can't skip ahead. And then if I wanted to post it onto Google Classroom, I can turn that on and check to post the assignment on Google Classroom. Uh, this will automatically push this out into there. And so I can then say assign. 
And so I have one student who has this assignment to work on, and then it is in my Google Classroom, and I'll pause the video for a moment so I can go into my Google Classroom and show you what that looks like. So we're into my Google Classroom at this point where I posted that Edpuzzle to. And so this is my stream and this is the video that I've posted. So if I were to click on this assignment, it will open it up in a new window as if I was a student. And then if I click play here, here's my note. I have to read the note and then I can click continue. And so last week it was Earth Day, I can click submit. So I got 100 on that one. I have to watch the entire video in order to get to the end. So even though the last question was in 10 seconds and the video was 13 seconds long, I had to get to the end in order to say that I was done with it. And then when I say show results, it will give me my score. If I come back into Edpuzzle, I don't believe that it's actually going to show me my activity because I didn't participate as a student, but actually it does. It shows teacher, that's me. I watched 100% of the video. I got 100 out of 100 for the automatically graded questions. I last watched it a few seconds ago and it was turned in on time. So that's basically how you can use Edpuzzle and use it with Google Classroom. It does make it really easy to check for understanding during the videos that you're sending out to your students, especially during this new normal as we're calling it. It's really simple to use. Please let me know if you have any questions with it or if you need any help integrating it into your own lessons. Thanks, have a great day.